And now that the lettering is trimmed, we're going to paint the blue. And the blue I'm going to use, today I'm going to use one of the Mars graphic pens, which two reasons. One, I've said that the Mars graphic pens are good for younger artists, and I want to show you how it performs a little maybe differently than than the Prismacolor pens, but also it just so happens that I actually like the color of CSX Blue that the Mars Graphic Pen makes. It's number 37 Mars Graphic. And one of the main things, I've used Mars Graphic Pens for years. Actually, the thing about it is, is that Mars Graphic doesn't make as many colors as it used to. As I start here, this is the biggest thing. The, the thing about Mars Graphic Pens is that I actually think they're fantastic. The thing about it is, is that through years of using them, compared to the Prismacolor pens that I use also now, is that for a younger artist, I actually do feel that they are incredible in the sense that they they actually have, uh, they, they do stay fairly uh, fluid, but that's one of the inherent things is that in staying fluid, uh, th they do have a little bit of a tendency, or actually even at times a lot if you're just learning how to use them, they do smear. So as I have my card over here, I'll show you one of the tricks that I do with them. And if you remember some of my other drawing videos, this is what I tend to do, is that, do you notice I'm painting along the tops of every edge? Because what I'm doing is I'm doing the paint along the top, I'm even going along the tops of the numbers, and again, this is why this white note up here is great, because I can tell you if I hadn't written that note up there, I would have probably painted the cab top. So I needed to write that note. And if little notes like that are good for you, do put notes like that on there. Because you do not want to lose the whole drawing just because you painted the cab top. And if you did paint the cab top, it's okay. It's still a very good drawing. But just notes like that are very helpful. But with these pens, I'm trying to keep my hand as far away from the drawing as possible because Mars graphic pens do smear quite a bit more. On the Florida East Coast drawing, you might have noticed I was able to put my hand on the drawing quite a bit more. And as I do this drawing, the thing you'll notice that I might end up doing is I put a card down. This is one of my sample cards. And as I put the card down, what I end up doing is, as I do, as we pointed out before, you put the line and you fill. You put the line and you fill. You put the line and you fill. And this, as I've said before, starts to be the very exciting part where you really at home start to say, this looks like the CSX engines that I've rail fan. This is actually one of the hardest parts, as I've said, because as the anticipation builds up, these pins get very fluid. And as they do, there's a tendency that your hand will very quickly get into the blue and smear it. Because right in front of your eyes, you're seeing a CSX engine unfold. And as it unfolds, if my hand went across that, a big streak of blue could get all across the drawing. That's why I put my hand on this card in case I ever have to go across the drawing. And a little bit here, a little bit there, I touch up. And I 
go along the edge and fill. And I need to go and fill along the CSX logo. And I need to fill along the boxcar wheels, along the X. And if you don't fill every little spot, it's fairly important to get the first coat on the train. That's why, as I've always said, it's good to do two coats. Especially with the Mars graphic pins, it's a really good idea to get the first coat down because they do stay fairly fluid, but you're good getting a first coat down and then do your second coat. And in the second coat, if you see little areas you've missed, that's part of what the second coat is for. And so now I start on the second coat. And as I've said before, it's a little harder to see what the second coat is doing because it's all going over the same blue. But the second coat is filling in any spots that have not gotten blue in the first coat, like especially along the logo. And on other drawings, like as I've said, like the Floaties Coast Engine, for instance, had a very small logo I had to go around. A lot of railroads like CSX has this, Union Pacific has this, Norfolk Southern has this. A lot of railroads have great big logos. BNSF has this. They have a great big logo that's light colored on a dark background. And in doing that, that is a big challenge. Some of the first engines I would recommend you draw, try to find engines that have a dark logo on a light background. Because as we did in other videos, you can just take your ballpoint pen or any pen and just straight do the lettering. Do you know how long it was before I ever, 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 when I was first starting, did a logo where I had to draw it out and color around it? It probably took me about three years. Seriously, I'm not kidding. It took me about three years, if not more, when I was first drawing. I didn't even understand how to go about doing it. I didn't understand that I had to draw it as a block letter, that I had to do two to do it as a block and color it in. I just thought that I could draw it as a single letter and color it yellow and that somehow it would just stand out. I, I just thought that if I colored it yellow and put it on the blue, it would stand out. That's how long it took me to finally make it so I could do logos like the CSX logo. Although CSX didn't exist as a its earlier railroads did, and it was actually just coming into existence. But at that time, as I was drawing some of these trains when I was very, very young. And this is just that same concept is that you
So now the blue is basically done, but we'll just take a quick second and touch up in a few places. It's always good to just go and look, touch up a few of the corners. And now we begin to trim the underframe. And this is the same process. And here is where as I said before, it's really good to put this card over the blue when your hand is trimming this black. Because do you kind of see that my hand is going over that blue? Like my this my little pinky finger is wanting to touch the blue and even sort of the and right as that blue's done is not the worst time to just get up and take a quick break if you want let it dry for a couple minutes Because touching that blue, what ends up happening is, is that you can smear it all over the page, all over the drawing. The blue can get into the CSX logo, and all the work you've been doing will be lost. And here we'll put the sand line in, and here we trim, and again we trim. See, there's a tendency to kind of pull away from that little. It's always good when there's a tool that has multiple purposes, like I use Actually, this is, I call this, well, the world even calls this upcycling. Not just recycling, but upcycling. This is a scrap of paper, and I use it to test my chip, and I also use it so that I don't smear paint. I mean, that little scrap of paper really has a great purpose. It's always good if you can find... you know, scraps of paper or something like that, that you can find new uses for. Because, believe me, my scraps of paper, that scrap of paper was how I found out the exact shade to paint the CSX engine. So that scrap of paper has one of the more important jobs. Because there's so many shades of blue that I have, I want to make sure that I get it exactly CSX blue. That's not a bad job for a little scrap of paper, I'd say. If I were a scrap of paper, I'd love to have that job. And one little last trim on the back steps. And then we will be ready to paint the underframe black.